this is going to be a timeline of spiritual wickedness throughout the scriptures. And you see it at the beginning. Before man was even created. Lucifer says in Isaiah 14, 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Obviously, it started in his heart. And he said it to himself over and over again. I will be like the Most High. And it built up in his heart over time that he was going to be the one. And this would begin the spiritual wickedness. So Lucifer is the one, the main one behind the spiritual wickedness. And you see him picking his ugly head up throughout the scriptures. You see him before the fall of man. So he's lost the crown. He was the top dog. He had dominion over some things, obviously given by God. He lost all that. Now he's looking down at man. And what does he see? He sees Adam and Eve before the fall. And there was a time before man when the Lord created spiritual beings to worship him, Lucifer being one of them. He gave them free will. Many of them rebelled. And ever since then, they have been against God and his saints. And you see the forces of darkness peeking up right at the beginning of your King James Bible. So let's go through the scripture and see how they operate. You start out with Adam and Eve in the garden. And here the serpent comes to Eve just like he does to most people in America. He appears as an angel of light, 2 Corinthians 11, 4. And, he's, and it says in Genesis 3, 5, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Notice that phrase. He said, ye shall be as gods, little g. This makes you wonder, kind of makes you believe that Eve was familiar with the gods. And that would be the spiritual beings who left the Lord in rebellion. And you read about it in Psalm 82, 6 through 7, where it says, I have said, ye are gods, little g, and all of you are children of the Most High. So there's some little g gods that are children of the Most High. But then it says, But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So if they're little g gods and they're children of the Most High, but yet they die like men, that has to mean they're some type of fallen angelic being. So he came to her, the devil came to her as an angel of light and promised her some enlightenment. Did you notice that most things in America that are filthy have flashing lights? Have you ever seen casinos and strip clubs and rock concerts at the concerts? You, what do you do? You put your lighters up and everyone gets their phone and turns it off sleep mode and waves it around. Flashing lights. He wants to, uh, the angel of light wants to give you some enlightenment. You go to the big cities, what do you see everywhere? Flashing lights, which makes people forget about God's lights. It makes you, um, when you live in a big city at night, you don't see the lights that God made. You see the lights that man made. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen through 15 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed. Here's your transformers. As the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So the devil and unclean spirits are appearing to you like money-hungry TV evangelists. They show up like that. You turn on the big light in the room at night. You'll see those money-hungry TV evangelists. You'll see evil politicians. Rich, trash celebrities. And this is all angels of light. To me and you, 
as Bible believers, they look like the Munsters or the Adams family because we got our Bible goggles on. But to the world and maybe some more naive type believers, these people look good. They look like the peak of what they want to become. And, you know, the Bible says don't envy sinners. Don't want what these angels of light have are these people who are possessed by unclean spirits or, you know, led by these fallen angels. To me and you, we can see it, but they can't see it. But that's how Satan showed up before the fall. He was approaching two innocent humans, and he had to appear as an angel of light. In America, he's approaching a more civilized people than maybe in other places. People who have been raised up pampered and with everything handed to them and uh, maybe even a whole lot of Bible background from their grandparents and stuff. He's having to appear as an angel of light, deceptive. So that's how he approaches. He comes as an angel of light, just like he appeared to Adam and Eve. Now that's before the fall. Now what about after the fall? You see, the fall is when... Adam and Eve ate the fruit, right? Sin came into the world through Adam. You know what happened after the fall? Cain killed Abel because of envy. 1 John 3.12 says Cain was of that wicked one. And envy is influenced by devils. It says in James 3.14-16, through 16, But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. So this stuff is devilish. And the forces of darkness would love for humans to fight among themselves. And if you can divide and conquer, then it makes their victory much smoother. They'll use envy to divide and conquer. You see envy in every field and in every aspect of life. You see it in you see it in churches. You see it in the workplace. Envy could be a sign that you're under the influence of a devil. After the fall, Adam and Eve began to have children and there can be strength and just two or three, you know, gathering in the name of the Lord. And the unclean spirits knew they had to keep people at odds so that they wouldn't gather together in his name. So the devil gets between the two brothers, Cain and Abel. He moves Cain to murder Abel. You see, unrighteous violence is definitely a sign of unclean spirits at work. And this was the beginning of a high level of violence that led to the flood in Genesis 6. What do you read? Genesis 6, 11, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So what you have after the fall is just a continuing progression, progression of sin and wickedness. Because things don't get better, they get worse. That's why we don't believe, as Bible believers... That we're going to bring in the kingdom and we're going to make the world better and better and better. Because actually evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. Things are going to get much worse. It's Jesus Christ that has to come in and make it better. But you can see the spirits at work after the fall. The violence. The envy. And what does that lead to? the days of Noah during the days of Noah that's your next time do you know what they were doing during this time the pursuit of happiness without God in Matthew 24 38 through 39 for as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all the way so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So it's just like in America today. What are they doing? Eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. It's all about the pursuit of happiness and not the pursuit of the truth. Truth brings burdens and sorrow for others along with it. And people don't want that.
And since the days of Noah were about the pursuit of happiness, that is how the unclean spirits operated. The gods were eating, drinking, marrying, and living life. You see that? Since the days of Noah were about the pursuit of happiness, that's how the unclean spirits operated. That's what, you remember we talked about those gods? When those gods came down, that's what they wanted to do. Eat, drink, marry, live life. And in Genesis 6, 1, in the days of Noah, it says, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, there's you gods, saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be at 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. The sons of God are not the same sons of God as me and you. You could only make them me and you by sh uh, shoving John one twelve, which is church age doctrine, back into Genesis. That's like shoving Sabbath keeping on a Christian today or something like that. It, it's not going to work. But the sons of God are the gods of Psalm 82 that we talked about. And Jude 6 that left their first estate and have to die like men. So the angels that kept not their first estate saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And probably said, probably said, wow, this looks fun. Look at all these people eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. I want to do that. I'm just speculating, but I think there are unclean spirits that want to have a good time. I believe someone who is into excessively living for the flesh would be more likely to attract one of these unclean spirits to be like, wow, this person knows how to have a good time. I'm going to get in that vessel and have me a good time. Also notice the word lasciviousness connected with the context of the angels which kept not their first estate in Jude verse 4, where it says, For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see that there in Jude. And I believe that when you're living just such a excessively living for the flesh type of life, you're just that's just an attraction to an unclean spirit. Who wants to have a good time? And it says in Galatians five nineteen, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, there's this word again, lasciviousness. Ephesians four eighteen through nineteen having the, the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them being, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Someone who's working all uncleanness, what type of spirits do you think they attract and what type of spirits do you think they already have? unclean ones you know i think someone who excessively lives for the flesh and walks in lasciviousness will attract unclean spirits who will encourage even more of this wicked lifestyle because they want to enjoy the pleasure of sin themselves through the person they inhabit now the sons of god saw the daughters of men that they were fair this shows they desire something from this world and they are they are most likely devils who enjoy inhabiting a person just for the good time. Eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. All this stuff. And that's how they did during the days of Noah. Now, we'll look at under the law of Moses. During the time of Moses and the, under the law. You see, God taught Moses how the children of Israel should worship. And during the days of Moses, you have Moses giving the law. You have God giving Moses a, a pattern and 
a, pl a place for worship as well. So, what do the devils do? They see that God's showing Moses all this stuff, giving him all this instruction. So, devils definitely want to counterfeit that during this time. And I believe there are devils that crave worship. So they would most likely be connected with the graven images or statutes during that time and certainly are today as well. In Leviticus 17.7, it says, And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils, after whom they have gone a-whoring. This shall be a statute forever unto them throughout their generations. So you see that, how they would see this all this sacrificing to God. So what do the devils want? They want people to sacrifice to them. And obviously they most likely did before this. But you really see this a lot here. In Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and under the law and stuff like that. You see about this sacrificing unto devils. Because it gets heavy into talking about sacrificing to God. So they get jealous. They want to be like the Most High, remember? In Deuteronomy 32, 16 through 17, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. There's those gods again. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils and not to God. To gods, little g, there they are, whom they knew not to new gods, little g, that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Now, Psalm 106, 37, Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. No doubt about it, unclean spirits were involved when Israel worshipped the golden calf in Exodus 32. As well. Exodus 32, 3 through 6. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears. And brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand. Aaron is acting as like a satanic priest right here. And he fashioned it with a graving tool. After he made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods. Little G. O Israel which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, giving credit to the little G gods for something that God did. That's exactly what they wanted. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat. Here it is again. They sit down to eat and to drink. And rose up to play. That's what these gods want. What did they? What did you see them want? They wanted to eat, drink, marry, be given in marriage. They see God getting worship, all this worship and sacrifice. They want worship and sacrifice. And here you see them wanting to uh, get worship and have eating and drinking connected to it. And Aaron makes a god for them to worship. <clears throat> And even makes them an altar. So the devil wants worship. For this reason today, what do you have? The performers and celebrities possessed by the devil are in devils. They know people worship celebrities. So what better place to inhabit than in the false gods of our day? These celebrities. So you see how they, they see what's going on in the world. And they come down and get involved in that. If they see people eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, they want to come down and eat, drink, be marrying, giving in marriage. They see people sacrificing and to God, they want to be sacrificed to. They see people worshiping these celebrities. Who do you think they want to get into? Now, the next one is during the days of the kings and prophets. 1 Kings 22, 21 through 23. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? 
And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. <clears throat> so they see God using prophets. So they want to have some prophets. And they can get their voice heard. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, prevail also, go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail, go out and do even so. So God would allow lying spirits to get into the mouth of prophets as a judgment on the people for rejecting the real prophets. That is why this country is so messed up. They rejected the real preachers, and now they're shacked up with preachers who want to uh, scratch their ears, tickle their ears. The most wicked men today are TV preachers with a big smiling face, and a lying spirit comes out of their mouth every time they open it. So they, they saw the prophets, the, the people who were being used of God during that time. People like Elijah, Elisha, uh, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. They, they would see all these prophets during the days of prophets. And they would be like, they're getting their voice heard by some people. Let's enter the mouth of these false prophets and be heard by even more people. And you can see when you read all of the Acts of the Kings how they are completely possessed by devils. Especially men like Jeroboam who starts his own false religion even. Especially men like Manasseh who sacrifice his own children to the gods. The stories about the kings of Israel and Judah show us that devils love to inhabit men with power, and that way they can corrupt society. Why do you think they want to inhabit the celebrities? That way they can influence so many people. They want to inhabit the politicians so they can corrupt society. This is why politicians are some of the most wicked people on the planet who speak lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. They're, they're just crazy in their mind because they're led by devils now that's that was during the days of the kings and prophets now we're going to see during the earthly ministry of jesus christ in matthew chapter 4 the lord jesus christ is tempted by the devil in the wilderness he offered the lord something in exchange for worship that's how the devil operates they will offer you something in exchange for serving them. They promise temporary things. And why would the Lord want the devil to give him the kingdom that would be temporary when he was already king over both kingdoms and will one day reign over it eternally? But the Lord Jesus Christ, during his earthly ministry, casted out many devils. It says in Matthew eight sixteen, When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word, and he healed all that were sick. Notice he cast them out with his word. If you put the word of God in you, and believe those words, and apply them to your life, you can cause the unclean spirits to leave. It takes more than just turning over a new leaf and cleaning up your life. You need to get saved and get into the words of God. And Jesus gives the truth about an unclean spirit leaving a man. In Luke eleven twenty four through 26, it says, When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He saith, I will turn into my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So the Holy Spirit's house is the body of the believer, right? The unclean spirit uses the body of a lost person for his house. He finds it empty, swept, and garnished because the man found religion when he left. He turned over a new leaf. He cleaned up his life but never got saved. So 
he just becomes more wicked than he was before because he is devil possessed and self-righteous through his religion at the same time. That's a horrible combination. But Jesus also gives the disciples power to cast out devils. In Matthew 10, 7 through 8, he says, And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely have received, freely give. Now, casting out devils like the apostles did, I don't believe that's happening today. That was one of the sign gifts of an apostle. And I'm not saying you can't pray that a devil would leave a person. Um, I'm not saying that it's not happened before where somebody said, unclean spirit come out of this man and, it, and, and God just took the unclean spirit out of him. I'm just saying it's not done today the way the apostles did it. You know, the, the priests claimed to do exorcisms and using holy water and a cross and all that stuff. That stuff's not going to get rid of the devils. Now, the devils may let that stuff get rid of them to further deceive you into thinking that the the Catholic church is the right way to go. But there's no power in holy water. There's no power in a, a little cross you can hold in your hand. The power is in in the words and in prayer. The devil-possessed man known as the maniac of Gadara had some strange characteristics. He had supernatural strength. He could break chains. He was weirdly emotional. He spent his time crying. He did self-mutilation. He cut himself with stones. He wore no clothes. The devils caused people to want to show their nakedness. He believed the fundamentals. The spirits in him knew Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and they believed in hell. He had a weird obsession with Jesus. He ran and worshipped him. And some lost men don't claim to be saved, but they constantly talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now another time, during the time of the church, the Lord, which is the Lord's body, during our present day. Today, at least in this part of the world, we... We really aren't seeing the same type of devil possession that Jesus Christ and the apostles saw. In this part of the world, the devils are appearing as angels of light, coming off very glamorous to the world. And when people come to this country, they say they find sin much more enticing. We aren't casting out devils with holy water and crosses. We're fighting spiritual battles today. 2 uh, Corinthians 10.4 says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I can't use holy water and a cross to get rid of demons or unclean spirits. Or as the Bible calls them devils, not demons. But, you know, most people call them demons. But the Bible word is devils. But I can't get rid of the devils with holy water. It's a spiritual battle. Holy water is a physical thing. I need the water of the word. In Ephesians 6.12 it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I believe the devils are inhabiting the celebrities, like I said, the TV preachers, like I said. I believe they're involved in the LGBT stuff and in the government. All these things come off very glamorous to the lost world. They come off civilized to the lost world. And there are many shows on TV like Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, whatever, things like that. There are people claiming to find houses and places haunted by the spirits of dead people. A lot of these obviously fake. However, there are real hauntings. There are less sinister spirits playing around with people. However, it's still an attempt to discredit Christianity and the Bible. They get people believing that their spirit will float around the world after death instead of going to hell or instead of going to heaven. Maybe they inhabit a person and the family calls a Catholic priest to come and exercise the devil out. So the devil leaves the body on purpose to trick people into thinking that the power is in the Catholic church. The question comes up, can a Christian be demon possessed or devil possessed? You see arguments back and forth among Bible believers. But when Bible believers say a Christian can be devil-possessed, they're not meaning that devil can get their soul or dwell in the body of the believer with the Holy Spirit. A Christian can be possessed in the sense of his flesh. 
just like the man in 1 Corinthians 5 had this happen. 1 Corinthians 5, 5, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. If he was delivered to Satan, then he was put into his possession. A Christian can give himself over to unrighteousness, and a devil could direct him. Romans 6, 13, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. In Acts 5, 3, it says, But Peter said, Ananias, Why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie? to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land. So you can see you can yield your members as instruments un of unrighteousness unto sin. If somebody's turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh or uh, unclean spirit, they're going to yield their members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. In Acts 5.3, Satan filled their heart some saved people's heart to lie to the Holy Ghost. So you see, um, I don't believe a saved person can be the house of unclean spirits like the lost person we spoke about in Luke eleven twenty four through 26. However, the devils can get their flesh, their health, and everything except their soul. It isn't like the case of Saul in the Old Testament where he would have the Spirit of God one minute and evil spirit the next minute. Um, we can't lose the Holy Spirit. We can't lose our soul to the devil. So the confusion comes when people don't remember the saints' two natures. We have sinful flesh, but we also have the new man. The devil can possess your flesh, not your soul. Uh, Bible believers aren't teaching that. You know, you, you'll hear Bible believers say all the time, uh, a Christian can be demon-possessed. So a lot of people say, well, you believe... A uh, Christian can lose their salvation, can get their soul taken away, that they can be indwelt by a devil. No, it's that they can be devil-possessed in the sense he can get your flesh, he can get everything except your soul. So, that's how they're operating in the church age. But what about during the tribulation? During the tribulation, the unclean spirits are going to have an all-out free-for-all. Revelation 6, 8. It says, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. The inhabitants of Hell are literally going to come out onto the earth during this time and walk the streets. And remember, during this time, unclean spirits will still be seeking worship. In Revelation 9.20, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk so you see that they're still getting worship they're still wanting worship and i saw a trailer for that old goosebumps movie with jack black where the characters were coming out of the book and walking in the streets i instantly thought of this verse that's what the tribulation is going to be like the locusts are going to come up out of the ground in Revelation chapter 9. You're going to have intense demonic activity going on. In Revelation 18, 12, it says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So the devils will be roaming around it's going to be an all-time high it seems like for demonic devilish activity the devils will still be working through false preachers and rulers as well in revelation sixteen thirteen through 14 and i saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of fault of the false prophet for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So the ten kings are also most likely devils as well. 
And it says in Revelation seventeen twelve, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. So you see, the beast himself, what is he? Half man, half devil. Most likely, these ten kings here are the same. S something similar. But you see, it's going to be an all-time high of devilish activity going on during the tribulation. But then, good news. After the tribulation, when Jesus Christ comes back at the second coming, he's going to bring in his kingdom, the millennial kingdom. So what do you have when it comes to unclean spirits during the millennium? Well, in Zechariah 13.2, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. And remember, Revelation 20, Satan is going to be bound in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. So finally, no one will have to worry about any unclean spirits. It will be the greatest time the world has seen. And it's short-lived, though, because... Satan's come out of the bottomless pit and he gathers an army together as the sand of the sea in number. But then that's short-lived because fire comes down from heaven from God and devours them. It, it even gives it just a little bitty verse about that. That's how little of a threat that is. And then after the millennium, what do you have? Great white throne judgment. The devil's going to be cast into the lake of fire. The fallen angels are going to be cast into a lake of fire. Any unclean spirit will be cast into the lake of fire. And then you got throughout eternity. Throughout eternity, there will never again be a threat of unclean spirits or the devil. In the city, they can't enter in. They can't leave the lake of fire. It says in Revelation twenty one twenty seven, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. The only people getting into the city is the righteous, the saved, those who are written in the book of life. The devils, unclean spirits, they're not coming in. The fallen angels, they're not coming in. There's going to be no more fallen angels, no more unclean spirits, no more devil. It's going to be complete perfection, complete sinlessness, no temptation. That's the way it's going to be in eternity. So that is a timeline of spiritual, evil, unclean spirits throughout the scriptures.